Hey everybody, it's Al with Bobcad. So today I wanted to look at machining a beveled gear using your fourth axis. We're going to do indexing. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is um, rotate this part so that it's facing the other way. All right. And uh, what we're going to do in this case, let me go to a right view, is we're going to machine the, uh, in between the, the tooth and the valley here uh, in three axis. And then uh, we're going to end up indexing the part and then roughing it out again and do our, doing our finishing routine. So the first thing I want to do is I want to center uh, the middle of this. So let's see how we can do that. I'm going to go to this view here. And I'm going to extract a wireframe from this face. Okay, so now... I'm going to uh, put a point on center and join a line between that point and there, and then this point and there. Okay, so from here I should be able to measure this uh, angle. So I got 14.683. So now I can uh, rotate my geometry. And this is going to be Z 14.6835. All right, so we have the valley centered. All right. Now, the next thing that uh, we want to look at doing here is um, well, let's go ahead and set up a job. It's a four axis job. Let's run the stock wizard. I'm not sure if this uh, part has a turned blank or not. And, um, but we're just going to cover it in some stock. Okay. And then the zero, sometimes people zero on the top, sometimes they zero um, on the center. I mean, that's up to your preference, but we have our part zero set. Okay, now, from here I want to create a boundary, so I'm going to create a new layer, and then I'm going to do utilities, extract edges single, project to Z, I'm going to make this one and a half, and I'm going to pick these two faces here, and what that will do is um, is going to give me the wireframe, and then I'm going to join up a line between here and here, and here and there, and this is what I'm going to use as my boundary. Okay, so I'll get rid of this stuff here, and that's my boundary. All right, so now let's see what we're gonna do I, I'm, I'm not sure if we can get away with um, with a toolpath pattern but let's let's just go ahead and program the first one so I'm gonna do three axis I'll go ahead and select all my geometry here I'm gonna choose my boundary uh, from here I'm gonna use um, just a Z level rough let's go with uh, quarter inch ball mill and we'll compute the defaults and see what happens all right so probably need a little bit smaller of a tool you can see that it, it doesn't quite fit down inside of there so we're going to drop down in tool size try again all right so that looks a little bit better let's adjust some of our parameters um, Let's leave some stock for finish, loosen up our tolerance. All right, so this gives us our roughing routine. Let's run it through a simulation so we can see what's going on. All right. Speed it up a little bit. 
so here you can see we have a pocketing type routine to uh, remove the material or remove the, the bulk of the material. So this is for one section. Now again, in this case, I have the stock uh, extended out. Let me go ahead and uh, let me let me adjust that away. Let me take that away for now, because uh, it's going to depend on how your your stock starts with, and I'll just make it a little bit easier to view. Um, okay, so that gives us our roughing routine. The next thing that I want to look at doing, let me go ahead and edit this, and let's throw a planer on there. Let's use the same tool. Uh, you can always adjust your your settings as far as how aggressive the cut is or the direction of the cut. Again, I'm trying to get through the concept here. So we we created a boundary, we applied a roughing tool path, and then we applied a finishing tool path, and uh, that's what we're going to do to uh, rough it out and then to run a, a finish pass on it. So let's see how it looks now. Okay. So not too bad. I'm thinking, um, again, if I didn't have a turn blank, I may want the tool path to go over the edge of the part. So let's get back in here and extract edges. And we're going to grab this edge and let's say this edge okay and uh, this way I can extend out my boundary a little bit so that it goes a little bit further I'll just get rid of um, get rid of this this line and this line and we'll go ahead and reselect the boundary and then we're gonna recompute and then that just goes uh, goes a little bit further. Okay, so we got one section. And again, maybe you run another way. Maybe you run on a 45. Maybe you use a smaller tool. All of those are adjustments, and it's going to depend on your part. Now, the next question is, how do we get this to make copies all the way around? So uh, let's see. Let's see if we can do a tool path pattern. So I'm going to draw a center line. This is going to be minus 1 and 1. Okay, so I have a center line. Let me uh, turn let me turn the axis display off so you can see we have this center line. All right, now let's do additional function, toolpath pattern, rotate, 3D rotate. Let me click OK. Let's see how many we have. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We have 12 of them. Yeah, 12 tooth. OK. So let's edit this again. 360 divided by 12. We want to make 11 copies. Pick our start point, which would be this one. Pick our end point, which would be this one. That just defines the center line. Let's go ahead and choose OK, and then now we have all of our rotations in there. Let's go ahead and throw this through the simulation and see what we have here. OK, it's doing the roughing. And then it's doing the planer tool path to come back and uh, and finish it. Okay, so that's uh, exactly what we're looking for. And again, we can adjust our step over and step down and our tool size and all that kind of stuff. Um, we may rough it out in this fashion. Um, in order to utilize the indexing, you're going to have the four axis standard. So what I'm going to do is create another setup. And then I'm going to edit the setup location. Uh, it's going to be it's going to be slightly off. Okay, so they should match now. 
because I had the other uh, stock shape at first. Okay, so now in this one, let's look at uh, four axis rotary. Let's select all of our geometry here. Uh, let's go with All right, so we got our ball mill. Let's run this around. Loosen this up a little bit. This looks okay. Let's go ahead and compute. You know, maybe we rough it out in this fashion and then we come back and finish. So let me blank out these tool paths here. And then here you can see the, the rotary tool path going around it. Let's go ahead and uh, run it through a simulation. I think that will be the end of today's video. Uh, if you guys have any questions, comments, feedback, uh, please reply back to the Facebook, the YouTube, or whatever thread this video may be posted in. Um, also, if you have any comments, uh, put a comment below. If you like the video, uh, throw a, a like up in there. All of that information is helpful uh, to the channel. and. Uh, you know and me personally so uh, if you get a chance and, and you like it make sure to like the video if you have some comments there are some comments in there all right so here we have our roughing we have uh, somewhat of a uh, semi-finished semi type tool path and then here we have the rotary working its way around uh, the shape so Again, uh, this is Al with Bobcat After Dark, and I appreciate you spending some time with us here today. I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Thank you so much.